Hello and welcome to this week's Midweek Message. It is Wednesday, June 15th, 2022. In Philippians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul writes this, And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that on the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. How much of life do we live on cruise control? Where we don't have to make a lot of decisions about direction and purpose because we're just doing what we've always done. If we don't have that for some parts of our lives, we would be exhausted all the time from trying to constantly figure out what we're doing and why we're doing it. Sometimes, though, when we're doing what we've always done, we get in a rut or we even forget why we're doing what we do. This pattern of practice, living in the confines of tradition and doing what we've always done, is typical for churches. There are good reasons for it, too. First, our traditions and ways of doing things have worked. Many of our traditions have a track record of decades of success. Others have worked for centuries. And some traditions, like the way we practice the sacraments or preaching or corporate singing and prayer, these things go back to the beginning of the church. These successful habits are worth holding on to. Second, our traditions are rich with meaning. There's a lot of comfort in the way we do things in church. Well-established practices make us feel grounded in turbulent times. The familiarity of our traditions reminds us in powerful ways that we belong to God and are gathered to do the Lord's work together. Third, our traditions are theologically informed. A lot of what we do in church is done for sound theological reasons. There's a reason that communion and baptism always happen after the sermon. There are deep theological traditions that inform our prayer of confession and assurance of pardon in worship. Our outreach and mission are done with prayer and intention, theological framing that reminds us that all of our projects when we serve others are done in response to God's command to love and serve our neighbors. And we believe that when we love and serve our neighbors, we are actually loving and serving the Lord himself. These are good reasons for stable, long-standing traditions that are not easily altered. But in our theological tradition, there's a saying that many of you have probably heard, reformed and always being reformed according to the Word of God. In other words, even our most deeply held and treasured traditions are open to change. Changes we make however, are not made for the sake of change itself or on a whim or in response to the attitudes and opinions of the world around us. They're made from intensive study of scripture, faithful prayer, and deep discernment. Our congregation has newly begun a discernment process by engaging with consultants to help us discern where God is calling us now. Now, this process is not just about the logistics or the nuts and bolts or the mechanics of this process. It's also about deep study of scripture. It's about fervent and committed prayer. It's about commitment to listening to the Lord who speaks. But as we emerge from the COVID-19 crisis into what we keep hearing is a, a new normal, there are risks, but there are also possibilities and opportunities for our congregation. This is a time to examine what matters most deeply to us as God's people planted in the heart of Ambler and how we can faithfully fulfill our calling to be a light to our town and community. Through this process, we'll do a few things. We'll look at our history, we'll think about our present, and we'll dream about the future. Part of looking at the past and present is to discover the unique gifts of our congregation and how those can be used to glorify God. In addition, we will seek clarity on what our about our church will never change and what are the things that are open to reformation. For this process to be successful, we need you to participate. The first way you can be part of this discernment process is to simply take a few minutes to complete the five-question survey, which I have put the link for in the comments on Facebook or on YouTube. I encourage you just to take a few minutes and give us your honest feedback. Your feedback will be recorded, analyzed, prayed over, It will help our session and the team working through this process as we determine where God is leading us now. I hope that you'll participate as we discover together where the Spirit of God is leading us today. Today, as the poem, I have a selection from Little Gidding. 
It's the last of T.S. Eliot's four quartets, written in 1942. Little Gidding was a small religious community in England that was founded around the time of Oliver Cromwell. The selection has several famous phrases that many will recognize. I selected this particular selection in this poem because it's moving, it's theological. This poem was actually written as a Pentecost poem to speak to the power of the Holy Spirit at work. And it's a poem that speaks of the recurring work of God's grace, animated by the Holy Spirit, which brings renewal and hope in challenging times. At the very end, Eliot mentions a rose. The rose is a reference and a symbol for both British royalty, but also the love and mercy of God. The fire he refers to is, of course, the Holy Spirit. Again, a selection from Little Gidding by T.S. Eliot. We shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and to know the place for the first time. Through the unknown, unremembered gate, when the last of earth left to discover is that which was the beginning, at the source of the longest river, the voice of the hidden waterfall, and the children in the apple tree. Not known because not looked for, but heard, half heard, in the stillness, between two waves of the sea. Quick now, here, now, always. A condition of complete simplicity, costing not less than everything. And all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well when the tongues of flames are enfolded into the crowned knot of fire, and the fire and the rose are one. Today's prayer comes to us from Thomas Aquinas, who lived from 1225 to 1274. Let us pray. Give me, O Lord, a steadfast heart, which no unworthy affection may drag downward. Give me an unconquered heart, which no tribulation can wear out. Give me an upright heart, which no unworthy purpose may tempt aside. Bestow on me also, O Lord my God, understanding to know you, diligence to seek you, wisdom to find you, and a faithfulness that may finally embrace you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Everyone, I hope that you have a great week. I hope that you'll take just a couple minutes and fill out that survey, because your input is so important to helping us have a faithful and thorough process. And I hope that I see you on Sunday. We're going to be worshiping this week at 9 o'clock and 10.30. And remember, our new organist, uh, Chris, begins on Sunday. And then at the second service, we're going to be sending our youth off on their mission trip to western Pennsylvania at the end of Southridge. So I hope that you'll join us for this good Sunday together in worship. All right. Have a great week, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>